Hello. So till now we covered the four methods of uh, building load calculations. Actually, we just covered three. The fourth one I just skip because it is not at all useful and that's very simple. There's just a formula. But now we are starting with the bin method, and this is one of the most important. I hope this is clearly visual. B I N method. So uh, moving further, we inform that any of the simple methods which we learned previously in the four, three videos are not in use currently because, because of the one major disadvantage which we looked of having a constant balance temperature and constant heat gains. So even though in the variable based degree day method we took into account the, the Q gain and the UA, that's the building specific data the dimensions, the material construction values, everything into account, but still the T balance temperature which we got was used as a constant value over the year. It was not changing based on the, the time, which I explained in that video also. That's one of the disadvantage of that variable based degree day method. And the bin method takes into account this changes in balance temperature or internal heat gain basically. Uh, so progressively developing from the basic degree day method to the variable de degree day method through modified degree day method. We have introduced different factors which took into account the process and operational efficiency, zone indoor and outdoor temperature, set point temperatures and the internal heat gains. While still the limitation we, we, we remember again is that uh, the, uh, the, the balance temperature was given as a constant. So we are now going to use another method of building energy load calculation, which is the bin method. And this is still in use uh, currently with some modifications, definitely. We'll be going through the very basic of it and we'll need some more, at least an Excel sheet to explain the, the, the advantage of bin method if we want to really appreciate it. So I'm just going to use the whiteboard as of now for the very basic explanation, but Further videos will be used, uh, will be using the Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets for better explanation. So this bean method takes into account the concepts and procedure of SEAP, which is Simplified Energy Analysis Procedure, and some of steady state building load calculation. These are the two concepts which we are used in bean method. This we have already covered. This will be covered after this bean method because it is developed based on bean method again. So in steady state building load calculations, we use the constant temperature value of the outside temperature. That was the constant throughout the year while we use the constant Q gain for the, the degree days method. So bean method takes the differences or the variation of the outside temperature, which was not there in this and the variation in the internal get heat gains, which was not there in the degree day method. So bean method takes into variation of these two. So this allows us to have the more accurate energy load calculations. And you may ask how. So as I explain you the method, you will, it will be more clear to you now. So what we do basically is in a in bean method, we have a outside temperature, which is varying based on the months or varying based on the temperature, very basically. So instead of having a constant average temperature of let's say 75 degree Fahrenheit, let's say there's some location which has a constant temperature of 75 degree Fahrenheit for the year. But now what we'll do is, we'll split this temperature, outside temperature into various beans. So we'll say there are some, uh, let's have some example, very proper example. So let's say we, we have some, year, uh, some hours, in the year, which has a temperature range from temperature range and the average temperature based on the range and the number of hours. So let's say there are 380 hours, which has a temperature range either from 50 to 54 degree Fahrenheit. These are degree Fahrenheit also just to just for your information so 
forever for whatever temperatures which are bit outside temperature which are between 50 to 54 degree fahrenheit there are 380 hours such similarly for outside temperature which are lying between 55 to 59 there are around 2000 hours in a year from 60 to 64 degree fahrenheit there are 4000 hours uh 65 to 69 there are 2000 hours again and 70 to 74 there are 380 hours sorry i just made a mistake this should be 62 let's say the outside temperature average outside temperature is 62 degree fahrenheit and in a year so this if we total up will be 8760 hours that is the number of hours in a year so in a year there are 380 hours when the outside temperature lies between this range there are 4000 hours when the outside temperature lies between this range and and similarly hence on so the average temperature between this is 52 for this it is 57 it is 62 for this 67 for this and 72 for this and i have split it the hours in such a way that still the balanced average temperature comes out to be 62 which is the same over here okay now the beauty is we'll do more number of calculations earlier we were having only one calculation for the whole year that was the average everything was taken into account as an average now we have split the number of hours and temperature into different beans this uh, this is one of the bean so for this bean what the actual case is this is one of the bean which me which is going from 50 to 54 and hence we do, will do all the calculations of the bean based on 52 degree fahrenheit and the critical difference over here is we calculated the total load earlier the the q gain as the out on the basis of outside average temperatures all the internal heat gains or external heat gains everything the the solar loads were all average over here now we have an advantage for the year which is for the time when my temperatures are this much we may have occupancy reduce or occupancy increase we may have we we know that this temperature comes up in winter season or mild winters over that time my internal gains due to solar external gains due to solar will be less so in this bean when we we when we do the balanced temperature calculation my q gain will be different and we can take into account all those uh differences into account and it's not appreciable right now because we are doing everything on whiteboard it it becomes much more appreciating uh when we look at the excel sheet but the difference in the 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 formula is very simple earlier what we had was in steady state building load calculations my q let's say any any of the q let's say the transmission heat gains transmission load due to conduction which is equal to conduction was given by ua total into t in minus t out right and this were the average temperatures but now this thing changes into n bin and summation of ua this is again summation or u a total whatever t in minus t out average so the difference now becomes we are taking into account the q bin and the t out average which was not there over there we, right so now what we'll do is for each of this beans we'll separately calculate the q transmission and add up which will give us a better estimate so let's take an example let's say we have a uh, u a example i will use the same values over here so it becomes easier let's say the u a total is 15000 btu per hour degree fahrenheit okay now if i end my internal temperature which i want the internal temperature the comfort temperature let's say is uh i'm so sorry the internal temperature which i want is 75 degree fahrenheit and as of now let's assume that we want a constant internal comfort temperature of 75 
So if I do the basic calculation based on the average values, which is this, my Q comes out to be the UA total, which is 15,000 into my TI and T out 75 minus T out is 62, sorry. And this value is, uh, let me just look at my notes. Obviously, the number of hours are 8760, the total number of hours in the year. And this comes out to be 17082 into 10 raised to 6 BTU. So that's the total requirement for heating because inter internal temperature is higher, the external temperature is lower. That means we need heating and this, me this much of energy is required for heating. But if we do use these values, these are the mean values. Now, my Q becomes for this first bean, the number of hours is 380. UA remains the constant. My T in is obviously 75. That remains constant throughout the year. That's an assumption right now. But we can change it based on our requirement in an Excel sheet. And T out average is 52 for that bean. And this value comes out to be 131.1 into 10 raised to 6 BTU. Now again, for the next bean, the number of hours is 2000 into 15,000 into 75 minus 57. And this value comes out to be 540.0 into 10 raised to 6 BTU. Similarly, for the next, the number of hours are 4,000 into 15,000, 75. The average temperature outside is 62, and this value comes out to be 780.0 into 10 raised to 6 BTU. For the next, we have 2,000 hours. 15,000 is the UA value, 75 minus 67. And this value is 240.0 into 10 raised to 6 BTU. And the last bean is number of hours are 380. My UA value remains constant of 15,000. Internal temperature required is 75. External outside temperature is 72. And this value comes out to be 171.0 into 10 raised to 6. Sorry, uh, the 0 is here. Okay, if we sum up all these values, these are for individual beans. If we sum up this, it comes out to be 7708.2 into 10 raised to 6 BTU. These two values are equal. That means if we use the average uh, internal temperature as constant, then we can appreciate that the number of total heating requirement remains constant. But the importance is now we have an accurate estimate that when the outside temperature is having an average of 52, we'll have this much amount of heat required. While if the outside temperature is 62, this much amount of heating is required. So we have more accurate, more amount of data available to make the predictions over the next year. And I hope I have covered everything, yeah. And uh, in the next video, we'll uh, take into account the balanced temperature calculations, and then we'll go into more details of the bean method uh, for all calculations and everything and that would be very interesting to learn. Thank you.